We're digging way back into the archives. This is Mr. Reality, and I'm joined with Liz Cross and Lizzie Andrew Borden, who was maybe framed for murder, and I wanted to get her side of the story, and so she could set the record straight. How are you doing, Liz? Uh, which one, me or her? <laughs> uh, let's talk to you first, and Lizzie Borden second. <laughs> well, uh, luckily for you, I don't own an axe. Um, no, I'm teasing. Uh, I have her here, which is kind of scary because, uh, you know, she's one of those things that all kids used to know the little rhyme about. There's a nursery rhyme. Yeah. yeah. So probably solidified more about her, you know, what she was doing. And can you see my screen here? I can. Okay. I don't know what happened to it. It just went crazy. Um, what did I do there? Uh, F11. There it is. Okay. Um, Lizzie Borden, thank you for joining us. Uh, have you incarnated multiple times since you passed away in 1927, almost 100 years ago? No, she has not come back down to the earth plane. Are you? Is that allowed? Yes, she is allowed. She's coming back down as a man next time. All right. Do you know what happened the night that your parents? So the so the people that don't know, she I think lived in Massachusetts. There's now a bed and breakfast at your old house, the official Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast house. And there was a murder that took place there, double murder. You both your parents were murdered. That's horrific for anybody. And then you were accused of it. And so you got off because there was no murder weapon. And so I wanted to hear from you what happened to the best of your knowledge, now knowing everything you know on the other side, that night. Did you murder your parents? No, she did not. A man did it. Yeah, I suspected that. Her father was involved in a lot of real estate deals, a lot of shady business dealings. And I think, to me, it felt more like somebody was responsible that was on the short end of that real estate deal. Was it somebody that was on the short end? Uh, it was a business person. It was. Did your father short him money? Yes. Was it anything to do with real estate? No. I, it wasn't anything to do with real estate. I feel like it was bootleg. Bootleg uh, alcohol. Did she know this person who was the murderer? And were they of high stature in the community and that's how they got away with it this person that was the murderer she didn't really know him no um but she knew of him and so did she ever have any reconciliation with her other family members or did they still blame her for the death was this person in society no this was some underground bootleg thing um did did your family members did you ever reconcile with them no why did they think that you were the ones because i was the only one around she says back then you know that's how they investigated things it wasn't all of this forensic stuff it wasn't you know cameras phone tracking uh this was all about who was the last one on the scene and How that's what that they affect her of her parents sorry how did the death of her parents affect her you know on an emotional level not only the trial but that's got to be brutal for she was in her 30s but still brutal for anyone um how did their deaths affect you she was shocked and horrified but she never really had a chance to grieve their death and when she passed on from pneumonia at 66 did were were they there to see her and give her solace
Her mother was there. Yes. Her mother was there. And her mother embraced her and told her how much she loved her and that she was sorry that she was ever accused. It's pretty brutal to be accused of something like that. Oh, it's horrific. It's the worst thing. I want to know from her, did she have any other soul contracts with her family that this life trauma helped to smooth over? Um, this is very complicated because this was this the first time you were there. This was the first time that she was their daughter. In previous lifetimes, she was the parent. And there were times when she wasn't a very good mother. It just seems like you know, th th there's always a lot of pain and hurt and suffering in their soul contracts. And they're just like switcheroo. Oh, I'll be the dad. You be the mom. Okay, you be the mom. I'll be the dad. No, I'll be the daughter. I'll be the son. There's a lot of that. And it's about bringing maximum amount of pain into the lifetime to one another. But instead, in this previous lifetime, this this lifetime is Lizzie Borden. It was somebody else who brought the pain in. So so it wasn't as if she was directly impacted by bad parenting. She says, on the contrary, they were very good parents. But somebody else inflicted the pain and the hurt and the trauma and the sadness and the grief and every other possible negative emotion that you can think of and it was about having to survive that she was an outcast she people were scared of her they never believed her uh you know gossip was the media and gossip was what you know set the tone and set the standard it's like the media is today you know Somebody could be innocent, but if the media finds them guilty, they're guilty, right? Sounds and like no something amount, in the I can't remember. Yeah, and no, and no amount of 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 uh, proving your innocence, you're guilty by media, and and that's basically what was going on in that time. But with you know, she says with the tongue, with with gossip, you're guilty by gossip. What's her identity like on the other side? And do people identify her as Lizzie Borden or do they know the truth when they come in contact with her? Other entities that have crossed over. So when you cross over, are you looked at as Lizzie Borden? No. So each soul has its own unique name and record and identity. And that's what she's known as. Not this earth plane identity. When, These are just roles we play. When you see her, you said they appear as pixelated. How does she appear? How do we appear to her? Ooh. How do we appear to you in 3D form? That's a good question. Does she see us in more than 3D form? And can she see into our soul? Or is she only allowed to see our 3D form and not our higher 4D soul form? Can you see our souls? She can hear the soul. Can you actually physically see the soul? No. Do you see us in color? No. They do not see us in color. Although when I look at them, I see them in color. 
weird. Do they see us in black and white or something else like fuzzy lines or something? Do you see us in black and we're gray? And do you see us in fuzzy lines? No, it's very clear, solid form. Wow. Can she still feel remorse over this historical tragedy? Uh, or has her mother and father and, I guess, the actual murderer gotten forgiveness from her? Did the actual murderer get forgiveness from you? No, the murderer never get, will receive forgiveness. And he was never caught. And he went on to murder other people. A serial killer. In the same way? Yes. In the same town? No. What are the things have you been doing over the last nearly 100 years on the other side? Uh, she's doing a lot of reading learning she sits in a rocking chair and she rocks back and forth she does a lot of knitting she likes to clear her mind and really just breathe fresh energy into her soul this was a very hard lifetime for her does she experience any other interaction with other soul entities on the other side Oh, a lot of interaction, yes. What's that like, and who? What's that like? It's very warm. It's very friendly. It's very vibrant atmosphere. There's no arguing. There's no fighting. Everybody's happy to see one another. Everybody is, like, rejoicing. It's almost like, when a society has just gone through a terrible war and the war has been declared as over and everybody is rejoicing because we made it through, we made it alive. There's only good times ahead. Uh, that's what it's like. It's like the war is just finished and we're Thanks. celebrating. Does she look in on any earth happenings or do they not care over there? You look in on any? They don't really concern themselves with that. Only if they have loved ones that are down here experiencing it. But I don't feel she has any down here at the moment. And what's next for Lizzie Borden? She's going to be a sister. And I'm saying a sister or a man. Are you going to be a man in the next lifetime? Yes. Okay, so what do you mean by sister? Oh, she's going to be transgender. What's the soul path evolution when you take that on? What's the soul path evolution? Well, it's about, she says it's about, it's hard to explain. It, it's about learning to love who you are. A great message for everyone out there. Love you for who you are. Lizzie Borden, thanks so much for clearing up the record. Is there anything else you'd like to let people know? Is there anything else you'd like to? She won't kill again. So she won't orchestrate another lifetime where she is accused of killing people. That was too hard for her. So she says, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to kill anyone. I just want to live a peaceful existence and face the regular hardships that people face, like troubles with relationships and troubles with finances and, and troubles with career and jobs and friendships. Those are the everyday problems that people have to face. <laughs> she says, not being accused of being like an ax murderer, like what, <laughs> you know, I was saying, 
can you actually pick up that axe? She says, no. She never held an axe in her life. Lizzie Cross, thanks so much for bringing in Lizzie Borden. Oh, my God. All right. Thank you. And, guys, uh, this was another phenomenal video from Mr. Reality. Be generous. Buy him a coffee. His tip jar is down below in the comments. Uh, Thank we'll you for listening.